In the previous sections we've looked at how you can work with Windows 7, but now let's begin to have a bit of fun with it and let's see how we can personalize Windows 7 to best suit ourselves. Now one of the ways to do this is to change the desktop and visual elements. You'll see here we have a uh, blue wallpaper, we've got uh, one icon here on the, uh, uh, on the desktop, we have um, the taskbar in a certain color down the bottom and we can change these by right clicking on any blank space on the desktop and from the context menu that appears select personalize. Now this will pop up a window of personalization options but for this segment we're going to look at the standard themes within Windows. Now you'll see here it says we have a theme here and the wallpaper matches the wallpaper we've got on the screen and the window color shown here matches the window color that we have uh, currently in use at the moment. If you move down uh, this uh, panel you'll see other themes here. You may look, be looking at the standard Windows 7 theme on your computer and there are other ones, architecture, characters, scenes and so on, that you can click on to uh, change the look and feel of your computer. Let's say we want to click on characters. Simply by clicking on that the desktop wallpaper changes, the colors of the windows change and uh, you'll see here that this one has uh, multiple desktop wallpapers so these will change periodically and they'll fade from one to another. You can revert to your previous theme simply by clicking back on it at any time. There's also a couple of links here to save your theme and to get more themes online. Now save a theme we'll deal with um, in the next segment but if you click on get more themes online you'll be taken through to a Microsoft website where there are many more themes that you can download and that will install uh, easily into Windows 7 so that you can uh, so that you can choose those. You may also find themes on third party websites though I would only really recommend that you get themes from uh, the official Microsoft website to avoid having problems with malware on your computer. In the next segment we're going to have a look at how more personalization options for the desktop and uh, how you can create custom themes for yourself. Now that we've had a look at how we apply a standard theme in Windows 7, let's have a look at how we can modify one. Right click anywhere in a blank space on your desktop and a context menu would appear again where you can select the personalize option. Here is where you have access to your themes. Now we have our unsaved theme here and there are various other themes that come with Windows and you can get more themes online by clicking this link here. Now there are ways to modify uh, these themes and these are through these links down the bottom. Let's have a look at the desktop background first. So click on the desktop background link. Now by default um, it'll take us to the folder where our current desktop backgrounds are located. But here there is a picture location drop down. We can select standard Windows desktop backgrounds or our pictures library. Now by default you'll see that all of the images um, inside a folder are selected and down the bottom here it, uh, there's options for how uh, the uh, images are supposed to be uh, displayed on the screen and when the image changes. Here it's set to every 10 seconds and set to shuffle and you can see here the desktop uh, wallpaper is changing um, every 10 seconds with a different picture. Now. We're looking here in the pictures library at the sample files that have been uh, included um, with, uh, for, for these exercises. And we'll have a look here. If we roll over the uh, mouse over these images, a tooltip will appear showing us the names of these files and more information about them. Now we want these Arizona 1 to Arizona 10 files. So if we just click on one, then immediately that desktop background will change to that one. But we can also tick other wallpapers so that we have all ten of these Arizona wallpapers here. Now these ten are selected, only those ten, and we can change uh, how often the picture changes, we can change the position of it, um, and uh, 
you have select all and clear all buttons up here as well. Don't forget, you also have a browse button so you can use uh, wallpapers from any location on your computer. Though I wouldn't recommend choosing a, an external hard drive that may be unplugged. So save changes when you're happy uh, and you want to change the desktop wallpaper permanently or press cancel to return to the wallpaper as it was before. And you can see press cancel and we immediately revert. Now, if we click on the window color link down the bottom here, we can see that uh, here we can control the, the color of the glass effect in uh, in Windows here. And now you see the glass effect at the top of this window and if we click on some of these other options you can see that glass changing color. There's also a color intensity um, slider here so that you can change the intensity of the color and it's really very very customizable. You can uh, enable transparency or turn the transparency off so that you have solid windows if you find solid windows easier to see and you can see this is also applied to the Windows 7 taskbar and there is a color mixer as well so you really have got complete control over the colors of windows on your desktop when you're happy press save changes or press cancel to return things to the way they were before you can also change the sounds for your uh, theme by clicking on the sounds link and a window will pop up. There's different sound schemes available. Some come with specific uh, Windows themes and also you have um, sound uh, sounds that you can control here that we will talk about in a later section. So let's say we want the afternoon sound scheme. You just select that and press OK when you're happy. Then the uh, last option is implementing a screensaver and we're going to talk about that in the next segment. Now that we've looked at themes, let's look about uh, let's look at screensavers in Windows 7. Now, many people get screensavers and desktop wallpapers confused. Here we can see the desktop wallpaper in the background. A screensaver is an animation that appears over that desktop wallpaper in order to prevent burn-in on your monitor. It was designed for old cathode ray tube CRT monitors to prevent phosphor burn-in on the screen and the image being physically burnt onto the glass. You'll see here in the personalization options in the bottom right uh, the screensaver options. Now here there are plenty of screensavers. Now we can see here that no screensaver is set by default. Now when might you not want to have a screensaver? Well if you have a, an LCD or an LED flat panel screen then you don't get this phosphor burning and if you set up a screensaver then you could find yourself in a situation where your computer display is just on for longer and it's using more electricity. We'll look in a future section at the power options and about uh, putting your uh, computer monitor on standby. But if you do want a screensaver there are plenty here. You can choose which one you want. Let's say we want bubbles and it'll give you an example of bubbles. You can preview this by pressing the preview button if you want and you'll see this screensaver operating. Some screensavers will have settings and you'll see a settings button here in uh, the middle and uh, some screensavers uh, won't, have, won't have additional settings. Here we can preview another screensaver and you can see here and to exit the preview just move your mouse. You can change how many minutes uh, the uh, computer display will be on until the screensaver uh, kicks in and you can also ask uh, Windows 7 to return you to the logon screen uh, when you move the mouse and want to start using it again. Here are uh, settings for power management and as I said we'll look at those in the next section. So press OK when you're happy with your screensaver. In the uh, next segment we're going to look at how you get more or less information on your display.
Now that we've looked at how we can personalise the desktop and change uh, Windows themes, let's have a look at how we can actually change the uh, display resolution and other display elements themselves. If you right click in any blank space on the Windows 7 desktop, you'll bring up a context menu and can select screen resolution from this menu. This will bring up a window allowing you to uh, change your screen properties. Now your screen will appear here and you may have more than one screen in which case you'll see uh, uh, you'll see a couple of screens. If you don't see another screen there is a detect button here to try and identify it and if you press the identify button it will show you uh, the number of your screen in the middle of the screen. It will tell you what the screen is. You can uh, choose the orientation of your screen. If you have a monitor that flips into portrait mode you can change that setting here and you can change the resolution. Now at the moment we can see this resolution is set to 1280 by 720. Windows 7 will always give you a recommended setting which um, will be the uh, default resolution of your monitor. So you can move the slider up and down to change that setting and you'll see the uh, uh, the monitor image changing above you uh, but on this occasion we'll leave it as, it as it is. There's another option here to make text or other items larger or smaller. Let's click on that. This is a very very useful feature in Windows 7. It's new to Windows 7 for people who have trouble reading small text on the screen. We've got three options here to have text and icons at 100% of, uh, of their size, their default size, or we can make them bigger, 125% or 150% bigger, and we can see this image on the right hand side, what would happen to a standard desktop in making these things bigger. The advantage of this, rather than lowering the screen resolution to make uh, things bigger, is that if you lower the screen resolution you can make the, uh, the uh, items on the screen fuzzy, but if you choose this scaling option, everything will remain pin sharp. There are other options here for calibrating the colour, adjusting the clear type text, which is, as it says here, is a technology that improves the readability of text on LCD monitors and flat panel monitors, and we can uh, set a custom text size if we want to. Uh, which is uh, in addition to the options that you see here for the screen scaling. Now in the last part of this section I'm going to talk about the ease of access features in Windows 7. Now in the previous segment I talked about how you can scale your display to make things uh, and text easier to see and easier to read on the screen. But there are so many other things you can do to make Windows 7 accessible. Now in a previous uh, section I talked about how you can access the ease of access features directly from the Windows 7 logon screen. Um, and also you, there are several other ways to access them. Here in the personalization panel we've got uh, a link to the ease of access center in the bottom left hand corner but you may more commonly access it through the control panel in the start menu here we've got ease of access and wherever you see this circular blue icon then that will indicate an ease of access feature so let's have a look now there are very various uh, ease of access uh, facilities we've got We've got a link here through to the main Ease of Access Center. We also have speech recognition technologies built into Windows 7, and you can set that up and set up a microphone on your computer. Let's click on Ease of Access Center. Now, when this opens, you'll be presented with uh, a great many different tools that are available. There's screen magnifiers, a narrator, an on-screen keyboard, which by the way is also uh, very good for uh, internet banking um, because if you have a, a Trojan on your computer that is um, stealing passwords that you type in, it can't steal anything you type into an on-screen keyboard. You can set up uh, high contrast uh, displays um, to make things on the, uh, uh, on the screen easier to, easier to see and easier to read. There are also various other settings below these. 
you can optimize the, uh, the operating system for blind people so that it can be used without a display you can make things on the screen easier to see you can use the keyboard, uh, use the computer without a mouse or a keyboard you can make the mouse easier to use, make the keyboard easier to use use text and visual alternatives for sounds and make it easier to read and type on your computer. There are a whole host of uh, ease of access uh, uh, features and facilities built into Windows 7 and they really are superb. I can't recommend them highly enough. So that's all it for this section. In the next section we're going to start looking at Windows 7 system settings, what you can change, what you should change and uh, how you can uh, optimize Windows 7 uh, so it's, it works best for you.